Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be painting this um, scene from Hove Beach. My local beach has these wonderful wooden breakwaters and they're often submerged at high tide and consequently are encrusted with barnacles, mussels and all sorts of things. Um, you know, bits of rope from fishing boats, etc., etc., and seagulls will often stand on them and sort of survey their territory, but also will avail themselves of a tasty morsel of some shellfish from time to time. So that's what I'll be painting today as a line and wash. Um, I've just showed you the pencil sketch and this is the line work sketch. These will be available to download and copy or refer to or even trace if you prefer um, on my Patreon page. Um, and so please follow the link below if you are interested in those um, images. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper, 140 pound weight or 300 GSM. It's 11 inches by uh, 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 30 degrees. I'm wetting the page all over except for the bird. I want the gull to remain dry paper so that the washes will run around it and I can um, preserve the white for his feathers so that he then stands out beautifully against the grey sky and sea that I'm about to paint. So I wet the page all over, um, as I said, and now this is um, a very um, light value of raw sienna and now a um, mid value of Payne's grey. The raw sienna was applied with a wash brush I think it was a round brush actually, but at a size 14. This is a one and a half inch Mottler brush, which is a large synthetic flat brush by Princeton. It's an Aqua Elite and a really useful brush for skies. You can see that the paint is running a little because of the angle of about 30 degrees. And I'm just encouraging the paint to run across the page horizontally and looking for a graduated wash leaving a little bit of the um, raw sienna glow, keeping it lighter across the horizon, and then the sea will be darker. I can darken that up a little bit more later on. Just trying to sort of feather the paint out and just leave a few lighter patches near the breakwater, um, and then squeeze out all the paint from the brush wash it out and then squeeze out all the water and clean up that horizon line a bit. Everything will soften and diffuse as it dries and it'll all dry back quite a lot lighter at the moment. I don't need to worry about putting too much tonal value, dark values into this painting. They've nearly all been provided by the line work, um, I put in quite a, a, not detailed, but I used a lot of darks to really um, get the shadows and the dark colour of the wood in the breakwater. And so all the rest um, is just going to be kept sort of fairly light and I'm just going to be looking for sort of texture and a little bit of colour in this very quiet, tranquil scene. So for the beach, that's um, raw sienna, burnt sienna and some indigo. So it's another limited palette today. So all the colours that I'm using today are as follows. Payne's grey, indigo, uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna. And I think there was a bit of yellow ochre on my palette from a previous painting. So I'm just sort of building up the scene, uh, trying to balance it as I go, trying not to do too much, but just adding enough interest to the scene so that this little gull pops out really nicely. So 
sometimes at low tide um, the water is is like glass it's really still there's hardly a wave ripple at all and that's what I'm looking for here so I'm just going to drag a little bit of tone behind the breakwater uh, just to sort of suggest that slight movement in the water but I'm trying to keep everything really still and really calm here today. So I'm just about finished with the first layer. I'm going to use my palette knife and scrape through in a few little places through the damp paint to reveal the paper underneath. This will just give me a few faint highlights. The page is still quite damp, so a lot of these little highlights will close up. And now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. So just time for me to grab a coffee. So here it is. Um, it's all dried really nicely. Um, the colours are a little bit uh, bleached out by the sun coming in through the windows of my studio. But I just now need to darken up the sea a little below the horizon line. So this is my uh, Payne's Grey with a little bit of indigo in it. Um, quite um, a light to mid-toned mix or valued mix and using my flat brush I'm carefully running across um, the horizon. I want to keep it fairly straight. I'm going to stop at the bird because the bird, its legs and the breakwater separates this part of the sea from the other part of the sea. So I can work quickly and soften back this wash here um, on this side and then I can go and fill in the wash on the other side with the same colour paint but this helps me to make sure I don't get any sort of anything drying back too quickly on this side while I'm getting that wash nice and even. So now I'm going in and cutting around the bird's tail underneath its body and using the same colour and the flat brush, a little bit awkward for me here, sort of bending around the camera tripod. Um, but now getting in that same lovely um, deeper grey colour that just sets off the whole scene and the bird a lot more because the bird is now the gull standing out beautifully against that darker grey. So I'm blending it so it becomes lighter towards uh, the shoreline and just softening across the beach a little bit with the flat brush, just very light feathery brush strokes just to blend. Now this is um, cad red and I'm going to paint in a few of these sort of old fisherman's ropes that have got caught and tangled and knotted around um, the breakwater. Using a size two round, just going to um, just colour in these little lines uh, just nice and roughly and they would just suggest the ropes. Line and wash technique makes it really easy to sort of finish off paintings like this because if the details go in right with the pencil and then the waterproof fine liner, it makes it a lot easier um, when you come to paint. This is just a little bit of white gouache um, onto the bird just to brighten it up a little. Then a few dots of white gouache here and there, just little bits catching the light, maybe some slightly different coloured uh, shellfish or crustaceans just clinging or barnacles clinging to the breakwater and the light sort of sparkling off them here and there. It'll all dry back a little bit lighter than that. And just some darker toned indigo swept across the beach just to add some shadow and a little bit of depth. Taking it across the tape and just dotting in a little bit more tone here and there. Finishing touches to that beach. 
all I need to do now is just to add a little bit more textural variety to it. And for this, I'm going to um, do some spattering of the paint in a moment, but I'm going to use a soft mask. A soft mask is something that's um, not permanent like masking fluid or frisket or something like that and i'm just going to use a sheet of paper i'm going to put a little bit of masking tape to hold it in place and lay it gently across the painting this will protect the sea because i don't want any of that the spatter to go into the sea and the first color i'm going to spatter in is a nice inky consistency uh, burnt sienna where it hits a dry page, I'll get a, a tiny spot of colour. Uh, where it hits wet paper, where I've just put some darker washes in, um, the paint will gently diffuse and give me softer, sort of different textural marks. And I've also spattered in some indigo and some white gouache. I've removed the soft mask and now I'm going to remove the tape. And here's the finished painting. Um, I've decided to crop it in to this kind of uh, size uh, because I really like it like this. I think when you're focusing in with a line and wash uh, painting like this, it's often a good idea to paint it a lot bigger than you intend it to be because then you can focus in on the part that you, that you want. Also, painting larger than the intended finished painting means that you're not sort of feeling tight painting on a smaller piece of paper. You can still use expansive brush strokes on the larger piece of paper so that the end result is nice and loose. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget to pop over to my Patreon page if you're interested in referring to um, the line work um, or the initial sketch. So thanks for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And special thanks to everybody that supports us both on our Patreon pages. And if you want to support us and support the channel, then please follow the links to support Morgana on Patreon above. And my link is there too. So thank you so much and we'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.